Mr. Smitherman, you have two minutes to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm George Smitherman, and I'm running to be the mayor of Toronto, and I need you to support me on October 25th. And in the next two minutes and in the time after, I want to tell you why I think I'm your best bet, not just to stop Rob Ford, but to build on the great strengths of a great city. I want to, uh, this is a, uh, I want to, as a former member of the Ontario Legislature, I want to acknowledge uh, the presence of Gary Malkowski, a former member of the Ontario Legislature. I want to tell you a story. When I was first elected in 1999, I went to the legislature and I hired a blind woman. But I couldn't find a budget in the legislature of Ontario to buy the JAWS technology for the computer that would allow her to do her work. So I went to the clerk of the legislature and he found a budget because he didn't want to be embarrassed. With a bunch of residents, some of whom are here, we saw a new pizza pizza store being built on Parliament Street. They spent $275,000, yet they left the six-inch lip because the building code allowed them to, and we had a protest outside of that store, and then they installed the right kind of doors and the right kind of ramps so that residents could get in there. When I opened an office, when I opened an office on Parliament Street, not only did we work to make sure that it was accessible, but we actually worked with people who were in wheelchairs or in scooters to make sure that we installed everything in the way that worked best for them. As a member of the Ontario Legislature, I had a chance to hire people, and I'm privileged to introduce to you Ken Harrower, who's in the front here. This man is older than me, this man is better educated than me, and I was the first person to give him a job. And I want to let you know that I stand before you as someone who is humbled by the privilege of being a candidate for Mayor of Toronto because I am a man who has struggled with addiction in my life and as a Minister of Health I worked hard to enhance supportive housing options for people with mental illness, to support the Canadian Paraplegic Association and to do many things which address the challenges associated with accessibility and disability. These are my values to make the progress that you want to make. It's not about an issue here or a good word there. It is about making sure that you have a mayor who shares your values. When we share our values, we have the best opportunity to make the progress that is required. I think I'm the best choice. I want to earn your support today. Thank you very much. Now, if you don't believe in the accessibility requirements, what will you do to create a culture of inclusion within the City of Toronto staff and in its various agencies? You know, I was elected in 1999 and in 2003 became part of a government that had a chance to introduce a bill which became the AODA. And we celebrated it, but really the only reason we celebrated it is it was so much better than the piece of crap bill that the Conservatives had brought forward. It seems to me that in Toronto, it's our obligation not to wait and just accept provincial legislation, but actually to get ahead of it. And I want to make sure that we don't just relegate issues of accessibility to a committee that meets every so often and the mayor drops by every so often, but across the range of agencies, boards and commissions to bring the influence of people who have the experience of challenges with accessibility and understanding of disability to bring their, uh, to bring their uh, pressure to be brought to bear. I don't believe in relegating to single purpose committees issues which must, to be effective, bring uh, influence across the range of city services. Beyond that, I have a plan, a diversity supplier program, which builds on a city policy from 2003 that says it is only right and that we should hold accountable the senior officials of the city to make sure that people in our community, whether they're visible minority, whether they're Aboriginal youth or people struggling with uh, disabilities and the barriers that are presented there, that they get a fair piece of the economic pie. The city spends 11 billion bucks a year. I want to make sure and prove the results and track the results to ensure that people uh, with disabilities and challenges related to accessibility get a fair share of the economic pie in the City of Toronto, not just single purpose committees. Obviously the budget is a huge issue in this election. How will you ensure as mayor that people with disabilities are protected when budgets are developed and implemented? And please be specific in your answer. Well, the way that I want to be specific is, is kind of building on what I just said. I'm not one of those that ever has a lot of confidence when government sets up a single purpose committee 
When you use the word committee and you use the word consultation, you have lost my confidence. Because I've been around long enough to know that this is the busy work that governments very often get themselves excited about so they can feel like they've done good. And way too often, and many of you know it because you've gone to those committee meetings dutifully month after month after month, way too often those were a pointless exercise. I want to make sure that we bring the influence to bear across the whole $11 billion of spending in the City of Toronto. And with respect, as an example, to the comments that we heard, we need to reform the Transportation Department. These people are car-focused. This is their entire mentality. They don't know what it's like to push a stroller. They don't know what it's like to be in a, to be in a, uh, a behind a walker in a wheelchair or to be uh, using a, a cane for the purposes of uh, navigating the streets of the City of Toronto. That's why it's so important that we bring the influence of the massive expertise and capacity of uh, the disabled community in Toronto to the fore in all of the city's agencies, boards, and commissions. Not just tokenism and lumped in and one committee and such, but power sharing and influence across the breadth of all of the activities in the city. Money is spent in the city here, there, and everywhere, one silo at a time. It's never going to be effective enough to have a one single voice advocate. I have watched those single voice advocates whistle in the wind and be ignored. If you elect me as mayor, I will work with you to find opportunities for influence all across the breadth of the city structure, and most importantly, I will tie the compensation of senior executives the senior people at City Hall, I will tie their compensation to their rate of success at achieving goals like, the, like supplier diversity. When I talked before about sharing the economic pie, the way to get people's attention and the way to make action happen is to tie results to how much take home pay they get. These are the experiences that I've learned and this is what I offer to you, experience, leadership, so that we can actually make a difference for people in Toronto. Out of the $185 million roof program, $21.6 million has been allocated to Toronto. What will you do as mayor to make sure out of that $21.6 million, there's a portion accessible uh, to people, it's accessible to people with, with disabilities, both physical, developmental, and uh, uh, mental health related. What, what portion will you use to make accessible housing? Shelter subsidies. Hall of Foot. St. Jude's. I was the Minister of Health. Increased by $220 million the amount of dollars available for the creation of supportive housing. And almost all of it took use of existing private housing stock, offered a shelter subsidy, and delivered supports from community-based agencies. And across the province of Ontario, we created thousands of units of good quality housing. I think that we need to use all of that $21.6 million, but we need to recognize it. There's a problem with those dollars. Those are time-limited dollars. Those are one-time dollars. And it will take us to have a lot of courage to spend them in a way that builds as much housing as we possibly can and then use our power to make sure that the province of Ontario renews those dollars and makes them stable on the long term. It's a good step forward that they've offered more flexibility, but there's a trap there, which is in short-term money for right now. But I want to work with you to create as many housing units as possible right now. We know we have vacancies in private housing stock. Let's use these dollars, offer shelter subsidies, and where necessary, offer, uh, create relationships, partnerships with the community-based organizations to deliver the supports right to people in their homes. I have the experience. I built such programs in Victoria Park, building after building where we have four, five, six units, people with serious mental illness at risk of being involved in the criminal justice system were given great opportunities for stable housing. I visited many of them in their own homes. And we have similar opportunities to do that, and I think that we should use just as much of those dollars and use all of our political power and might to get those dollars converted to long-term, stable, permanent dollars for long-term, permanent, stable housing for people badly in need of it in Toronto. Thank you. 